I'm Detective Lieutenant Tyler, your host for Gangbusters. This is a story about a man who liked to bury treasure in jars, other people's treasure. In just a minute, I'm going to tell you about Homer Van Meter, a man of many talents, all bad. Homer Van Meter was a man who could have made a success in many legitimate fields of business, but he had a strange fascination for violence. For his best friend, he chose John Dillinger. The only thing these two really had in common was the love of crime, particularly murder. Van Meter and Dillinger met in prison and after their release got together to discuss business. Hi, Reader. Oh, Tony, I asked you a hundred times not to mess with the eye shade. So you did, so you did. But I'm a little slow on the memory department. Will you cut it out? I uh, see you got some new talent. They look uh, pretty good. You think they can keep up with me? Why don't you give them a blush and see if they'll stand up with you? Oh, I think I will. Lousy go, fancy pants. I know you. Man, you're talking to the biggest. Well, I can sing. Your little man show you how to shoot that. Oh? You want my cue? Yeah. Okay. It's all yours. Oh, another fast one like that pretty face, and I'll rack you in a corner pocket. My name's Homer. Homer? <laughs> I'm Tony Mulatto, and I'm gonna give you a face full of knuckles. I kinda like the way you said Homer. No, and you just better call me Mr. What's new? How about you, Homer? With you? I'm in a quandary. You want his arm for a souvenir or just his head? Homer, I want no part of this punk. Anything you say, Mr. Dillinger? Dillinger? Now, you go shake hands with yourself, windbag. And remember, men get shot dead for pulling a knife on Homer Van Meter. Look, fellas, give me a break. I didn't know. Blow! Who's up? You. Hey, Tony. You forgot something. Forget it, Reader. Why didn't you tell me who we were? I could have got myself killed. <laughs> Funny. I had the same idea. Now, the baseball team's still hard up for pitchers. The life of a Joliet the Warden was trying to make a deal for softball with a good curve. <laughs> They're out of your class, Tony. Stay a punk, and you'll always stay healthy. Oh, look, fellas, I just want to say I'm sorry. You said it. Sure, sure, but there's some big deals you might... I could be a lot of help to you. Mr. Dillinger, do you know of any big deals we can use in Milano on? I'm sorry, Mr. Van Meter, but I'm fresh out of big deals. Why don't you go home? Yes, sir. We're just getting a low type of customer here since they've been away. He used to keep the place exclusive. Say, so, uh, maybe we can use the kid. Uh, no dice. Look, over. Oh, you and I decided to team up and stir. It was for heavy sugar. And I'm not going to take any punks on a tough job. First time you're going to cut down a guard, a guy like that's going to fall apart at the seams and lose his dinner. Yeah. We still need someone to run errands for us. Maybe steal cars. Yeah. Got any hardware yet? No, not yet. I figured on tapping Benny the Frog. He usually keeps a nice line of rods in the back end of the pawn shop. Rods? Now you're talking small, John. Look, uh, what do you stick up with these? Grocery stores, gas stations? Uh -huh. For the kind of jobs we're going after, you need artillery. Artillery? Yeah, the works. Machine guns, automatic rifles, shotguns, maybe grenades. Where the hell are we going to get hold of stuff like that? From the police warehouse. Oh, but did you go stir bug after you got out? I, uh, I've been busy while I waited for you, John. I got a brand new jail lined up in Peru, Indiana. A jail? Now, no, wait a minute. Don't get excited. This jail has a beautiful new arsenal, just loaded with goodies. What exactly, I don't know, but I'll find out tomorrow along with a complete layout. How? Ah. 
You just uh, walk in and say, uh, here I am, show me around. Exactly. <laughs> oh, uh, allow me to introduce myself more properly, Mr. Dillinger. Archibald Jeopold III, a writer of thrillers and uh, penny dreadfuls will be. <laughs> Archibald Jeopard III, uh, writer of thrillers and penny dreadfuls old be. And uh, I'm dashed eager uh, to see how you chaps differ from our own constabulary. Uh, research, you know. Uh, so I can write a story for the folks back in England. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, based it on someone like yourself. <laughs> well, that's very nice, Mr. Shepard. Uh, there's not much written about small town police these days. Uh, everything's big city, private eyes. Ah, uh, yes. The fiction has become simply dreadful. Uh, crime fiction, especially. That's why I'd be so frightfully grateful if you'd show me through this beautiful jail. Uh, it, it is, you know, uh, simply beautiful. Why, uh, I'd be happy to uh, do it myself, in fact. That's awfully decent of you, Chief. I understand you American police use all kinds of modern weapons to uh, root out the criminals. But perhaps uh, in a small town like this, you What's know... that? Well, I've just got something to show you. Come here, Mr. Jeffrey. Take a look at that. We've got as well-equipped arsenal as any big city. Well, that's fascinating. And see there, submachine guns. And even some of those new bulletproof vests, just like the FBI uses. Ah, uh, we're equipped for anything, Mr. Jefford. Any of them gangsters come around here, they'll get a hot welcome. I'm, uh, sure they will. Hey, John, look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, these are for me, Homer. Have two. They're cheap. <laughs> All right. You got drums for these? Yeah, they're in the sack. Uh, bulletproof vest? <coughs> no. No, they're too bulky and too heavy. Besides, those are for yellow bellies. Say, uh, maybe we ought to take one for Tony. Want anything else? I don't think so. You got ammo? It's in here. Now, don't worry, Chief. We'll give it back to you. A slug at a time. <laughs> With the arsenal, Van Meter and Villager plunged deep into crime. Policemen were too well aware of the murderous pair who never hesitated to trade slugs for money. Well, a little better than 20 grand each. Not bad, huh? Not bad at all. Don't buy a heap of living. I think I'll put my order in for some. You leaving? Yeah, I'm leaving. What about me? I drove the getaway car. Where's my cut? Oh, uh... Yeah. That's payment in full. A hundred bucks? Hmm. Well, you were Homer's idea. You let him keep you and spend money. So that's right. Here's another hundred. Don't buy yourself a big flashy car, huh? <laughs> Thanks. Well, well, good luck. You take care of yourself, hmm? You bet. And if you need me, you, you know how to find me. Right. Van Meter wanted to save for a rainy day. Logically, for him, he didn't trust banks. You really gonna bury all that dough, Homer? That's most of your cut. Twenty grand, Tony. Ten in each jar. Tempting, isn't it? No, no, I didn't mean that. Sure I... you did, Tony. Just like I mean I'll kill you if you ever touch a dime on my money. I won't, I swear, but it seems kind of crazy to bury all Systematic that. Systematic savings, Tony. It's the only thing if you're smart. And I'm smart. I'm not gonna wind up with nothing but the scars to show for all the chances I'm taking. Now look, I'm going back down the road a piece. You sit here and don't look back, or I'll turn you into a pillar of salt. I won't. I promise. That's a good boy. Van Meter had a conceit to match his nerve. He figured he had Tony cowed, could sneer at him. The name Van Meter was enough to keep Tony in line. carefully, disguising the spot. There might come a time when he'd be on the run, and money was one friend he could count on. One day, Van Meter found bad news in the newspaper. John was in jail. Oh, no, they'll fry him for sure. Well, I don't know. Putting old John in the penitentiary is one thing. Keeping him there is something else again. Let's go. Van Meter was right. Dillinger concocted a plan. He executed it fearlessly and perfectly. 
Smeared shoe polish on it and bluff the guards with it. Can you imagine? Sure. If Dylan just stuck what appeared to be a gun in your stomach, would you stop to examine it? Uh, I wish I could say yes. Anyway, Dylan is loose. Yeah. And if he gets with Van Meter, and he will, the devil will have another holiday. The only question is, where? Sioux Falls. Our Barker's got the job all lined up. We'll join up with the Barkers and Al Carpus. We'll take Babyface and Nelson along for good measure. Tyler was not mistaken. It was a devil's holiday. Van Meter, Dillinger, Carpus, Nelson, and the three Barkers, Ma, Doc, and Fred, doing the devil's work. The Sioux Falls job was planned by Ma with the thoroughness of a general setting up a difficult campaign. Every one of her men secured his post on time and carried out his orders with precision. Then the unforeseen happened, calling for a drastic action. Everything's under control here, John. Take your time. Confident the situation was completely under control, the gang members coolly went ahead with their assignments. In what was a matter of seconds, a bank was gutted a town held at bay, and the gang made a clean getaway. In St. Paul, Tyler and fellow officers began a campaign by asking all citizens to report any suspicious persons. Many worthless tips were checked off. Then one of the routine checkups exploded. Excuse me, are you Mr. Hellman? Sorry, sir. I'm a soap salesman. Hey, wait a minute! The officers flushed their quarry. There was no time to set up a cordon around the apartment. One misstep meant death, as one policeman discovered. He was felled as he broke in on village. Pursued and pursuer recklessly exposed themselves to possible destruction. Van Meter and Dillinger won, cheating the law and borrowing a new hunted breathing spell. They did leave behind a confederate, Eddie Green. He was trapped and died fighting against it. Dillinger and Van Meter made good their escape, leaving a dead officer in their wake. They fled without warning Eddie Green. He showed up, tried to fight, but his luck had run out. Van Meter, Dillinger, and Hamilton selected a roadhouse, Little Bohemia, for a hideout. They hoped to hole up until their trail cooled. They didn't know the scent had been picked up, the law closing in. It's fighting you, Homer. This. You've got the FBI heat on you, John. You're getting too popular. That makes us all too popular. So if you don't mind, I'm cutting out of here tomorrow. Chance. There'll be more cops on the way. We gotta blast out now. I'll get my bag. There's no time. 
Oh, let it go. Wait a minute. Arthur, he's the only one going to tip the cops. Where is he? Let it go, John. We gotta move. Go on. Dillinger and Van Meter did literally chop their way out in a break for their car. Their guns spewed out a torrent of lead as a cover. Despite the steady returning fire by the officers, Van Meter and Dillinger reached the car and made a desperate, screeching getaway. Separated from his partners, Hamilton attempted to slip through another exit. The reckless bid failed. He cut down. The law also suffered in springing the trap on Little Bohemia. One FBI agent was shot to death. Van Meter knew the slaying of the FBI agent was the finish. He made plans to leave the country. Systematic savings, Tony. An umbrella for a rainy day. All right, Homer. Drop the artillery. Easy. You need some nerve tonic, Tony. With all this gold, I can buy it. You once were. Now you're nothing. It's my turn to be a big shot. I'll kill you for this. Acting on a tip that the reader operated a hangout for gangsters, agents moved in. It was clear the reader had something to hide. The agents kept at him. I heard he was crazy mad at Tony Melendo. He swore he was going to kill him for stealing some of his dough. But I don't know where Tony is. I swear I don't. I haven't seen him in weeks. I'm in a respectable place. Then don't swear. Come on, Carson. We've got to arrange a welcome. And, mister, if you want to feel some real heat, dip that meter. From what was known of Van Meter's traits, Tyler was sure the gangster would keep his word. He'd try to get Tony. I passed the word the radio and newspapers were closing the town up tight. Good. He can find a hundred different ways to slip into the city, but only one way to leave it fast. Steal a car. Hmm. Not Van Meter. He's too cagey. The car might be spotted or he might be spotted. Anyway, that's what you'd expect him to do. All right, then what's left? He's got money left. He'll buy one. We can't cover every car dealer in St. Paul. That's true. But we can make him buy it where we want him to. Oh, Chief, you touched. Could be. But read this. Cadillac, perfect condition. Special high-speed gear. Fastest car on the road. Sell quick for cash. Inquire at Lacoose Garage, Main and 3rd. All right, it sounds mighty good, but how do you know he'll see it in among 500 others? Because this will be in a box on the second page. The trap was baited. One day went by. Two, no sign of Van Meter. The strategy looked weak. Then suddenly a buyer appeared. It was Van Meter. He had the cash, was impatient, difficult to stall. The garage man dodged, saying he wasn't the owner but he'd have him there at four to complete the deal. Okay, I'll be back at four. It'll just give me time to see an old friend. Oh, uh, be sure and have the owner bring the papers with him. I don't want any delay. I may be in a hurry. Oh, yes, I'll take care of everything. A call was made, but it was to the FBI. The stall gave Tyler two hours to make certain Van Meter would not shoot his way out of another trap. This time, the law would shoot first, if need be. Elsewhere in St. Paul, there was a man who should have worried more. He was Tony Malento. Hi, Pops. What's happening? Ain't nothing to shake it, man. Everything's cool. What's your hold? I'm clean, man. How about leaning on these a little? All right, Dad, but I'm working on the champ now. Crazy. Be right with you, man. Easy come, easy go, huh, Tony? Yeah. Where are you, big shot? Where have you been? I've got something for you. Don't reach for that. Any messages? 
Don't. Better call a cop. There's been a murder. Tyler and his fellow officers swooped in to complete their strategy. They were determined not to miss this cop killer again. Van Meter was wanted dead or alive. There wasn't much time. I brought him inside, just like you said. Good. You stay here until he shows up. When he does, get back inside. If there's any shooting, duck out of sight. And there will be if he shows up. I will. Times like these, I wish I'd stayed in the traffic division. Check it be real good shape. I'll call him again. Whatever. I'll go with you. Back meter! Stay right where you are. Yes, yes. Homer Van Meter. A few seconds ago, he was a live killer feared by dozens of states. Now he's so much garbage. Van Meter's death signaled an end to a fantastic era of robbery and slaughter. The criminals paid a high price for it. Van Meter dead, Hamilton dead, Ma and Fred Barker dead, so the list goes on. Any man who picks up a gun against society will join that list. It's only a matter of time. Our next gangbusters case is just as authentic, right from the police files. On behalf of the police, we invite you to join us. Gangbusters, created by Phillips H. Lord. upon police records, court records, and personal interviews.